Military communication isn't what it used to be. The Israeli army is taking a whole new approach. It is using internet social networks in an effort to lighten negative views about the security struggle with Gaza. In this office building in West Jerusalem, they take a softer online approach than on the front line. There, the Israeli Defense Force means armor, infantry, and gun barrels. Here, the weapon is user-friendly consumer information. Meet the new media warriors. In the deadly Gaza context, the military spokesperson works to defuse global recriminations. The goal of this is to actually try and reach audiences all over the world. Audiences that maybe don't get their information and messaging from the mainstream media. We would like to reach out to those audiences and influence them as much as we can by supplying them information and content, visual and other. The army says it already has more than 300 young recruits helping to transform messages that may originate with three-star generals, strategists and politicians. It began setting up its new media department in 2008. As well as this cell in Jerusalem, there is one in Tel Aviv. There's a difference between a military organization and social networks. Why? A military is more closed, the language is more harsh, it's different. The social networks is exactly the opposite. It calls for interaction, it's open, it's a lot more emotional. But the big advantage that we have is we have people like Topaz and his friends, which are 18-year-olds, and they were born to this kind of reality. This is why they can be so creative and we can benefit from their creativity. So you see, everything that comes out is um, put in English, French, and Spanish at the same time. Okay, I'll show you. Um, um, this is an example of uh, the leaflets that we bring to civilians in Gaza. This is also an example of what we do. I'm showing you, of course, the French website, as you can see, the French Facebook page. Facebook, an interface for hundreds of millions of users around the world, and YouTube. If everyone else uses these, what's to stop the Israeli government? The IDF Twitter account has more than 200,000 followers and is checked daily by foreign journalists covering this crisis. Users must judge what they see, read and hear for themselves, of course. But the new media warriors are determined to leave no web page unturned in their effort to present their version of events. Mm -hmm. From this soccer stadium, there were a few rockets attacked, the Fajr were... Our correspondent in Israel says these walls have witnessed battles for centuries. The confrontation today between Israel and Hamas is being waged with the same weapons as always, but there is also a new, very different one, the Internet. In this version of war, Israel wants to reverse reasoning, which says it usually wins on the field of battle, but as often as not loses the war of communication. The Israeli authorities want to avoid harmful press by being proactive in presenting their rationale for their actions swiftly. New media expert Yuval Draw describes this innovative experiment. Social media has two messages. The first one, it's all about conversation. It's not a one-way street, it's a two-way conversation, and the IDF want to take part of it. The second one, they are cutting you, they are cutting the middleman. They want to speak directly to the audience, because they believe that the middlemen sometimes do not represent the IDF story as it should. Draw addresses a question of the IDF's online dispersion of information using media generally considered a domain of lighter content. Is this appropriate? I can understand Twitter, I can understand Facebook, but Tumblr and uh, Flickr, maybe it's a little bit a teenager style. I mean, after all, this is a war. There are casualties, there are a lot of damage, and maybe there are taking it a little bit too trivialized. They are making it an everyday event. And a lot of criticism is about this point. Maybe social media is not the right platform for this kind of an event. Israel is constantly and acutely aware of other countries' scrutiny. The authorities hope to lessen the impact on public opinion by explaining certain decisions. We haven't seen an army using in such an intensity social media and I don't think it, it's the last one because social media is the new media, is the new thing, the audience is there. We know that millions, well a billion of people is in Facebook. You want to communicate this audience where, it, where it's sitting. First, it's unprecedented and second, there will be followers after the IDF, yeah. The strategy is far from guaranteed to be successful. How will sophisticated communication weigh in the balance against video of Palestinian civilians being pulled out of destroyed buildings?
Let's take your example. There was a building, a lot of people got killed. Uh, one side of the story is, look how many kids died. The other side of the story, maybe, I don't know if that is the case, but maybe there was a terrorist inside this building. And this terrorist hid in a place with civilians because he knew that the IEF would not search for him. So this is the same story, but two sides of it. And in the last time, the IDF was accused for not telling its story, for not telling the entire story. And this time, he doesn't take prisoners, quote unquote, he, t he tells the story straight to the audience. Will it help? I don't know, but it's a nice effort.